Hi Gail. Hi, hello. Hi Gail, my name is Sindu Alpito from medcom.id. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> you know, every time I turn on the radio in my car, your song always there, accompany me going to the office. <laughs> <laughs> I get a good song to start the day off real petty. <laughs> okay. Have you imagined before that you are become popular here in Indonesia, miles away from your home? I mean, that's so crazy to me that like I people can like know me or my music even when I've never even been there before. Like that is so so amazing and I'm like so grateful, but it's also so hard to like try that my brain around I'm like what do you mean no no you're <laughs> but have you heard about Indonesia before oh I have I have I mean I personally I don't like to make assumptions about a place that I've never been to or even like how people live in a place that I've never been to and oh. I've I've never left the states um it's something that I would really love to do but with 2020 and whole pandemic it's like insinuating circumstances where you don't necessarily know how to handle everything correctly and so Um, obviously my goal is to get out there as soon as I possibly can, but with COVID and everything, it's always a bit of a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's start the interview, Gil. I have several <laughs> questions and the first one is, I saw your latest post on Instagram that mentioned the children in the preschool singing your song, you know. <laughs> At the time of writing, did you have certain considerations about explicit words? I I purposely did like a censored version just so like it can be used in some ways without cursing like if anybody wanted to put it un under like a TV show or play it on the radio or if I wanted to do a show like I could do a censored version. I have accidentally taught a lot of children bad words which is my bad. I didn't, I didn't particularly, I didn't necessarily mean to do that but Sometimes things happen and you can't avoid it. But um, yeah, I definitely like made a censored version because apparently children exist and they aren't meant to hear the F word at like seven. Yeah, because your song is so catchy. So the kids are, you know, singing yeah, about that. Apparently, yeah. apparently they're singing it in preschools, getting all, <laughs> all, getting all the parents mad. Okay, I, I I love your music very much, uh, and it, it reminds me of pop punk and emo era in the early of 2000. Do you listen to music from that era? For sure. I mean, Avril Lavigne. I listen to a lot. Alanis Morissette is a big inspiration of mine. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I also listen to like current music and music before that. I just try and listen to like as much music as I possibly can. Okay, what's your favorite band, band from that era? I mean, from the early of uh, 2000? I would even say just like even um, Alanis, Alanis Morissette was like, it's just, she's not a band, she's just like a solo artist yeah, that she's a solo artist, like, I know. really, really love, you know? Okay, and who is your biggest inspiration in music? It changes a lot, I would say. Um, One of my biggest inspirations has always been Aretha Franklin. I've really been inspired by her since I was seven. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, as long as I can remember wanting to do music, she's always been somebody that's inspired me to perform and just make music of my own. Um, I would in no way say my music is like Aretha Franklin 2.0, but she's literally one of the person, like one of the people who inspired me to want to make music and to want to perform. And she was just so talented and her talent was so, inspiring to me i just wanted to even be maybe half as good as her okay see uh bring your inspiration to writing or the sounds or something yeah i mean i would i would say definitely like more in the voice area she's was somebody that really inspired me even like her her as a performance and as like a writer Um, I think she's absolutely amazing. I would in no way say what I'm doing is Aretha Franklin 2.0. I think it'd be offensive to try and compare the godliness of what she was doing compared to what I am doing. Um, but she's always been like a huge inspiration. But even like with writing, um, Julia Michaels has been a big inspiration for me, especially somebody who's an artist and able to write for somebody else's artist project at the same time. Like, I think that's so 
cool and so impressive that she like was able to do that. Okay, thank you. Your singles was released with various arrangements, you know, so many versions of ABCD and your other songs. Could you tell me about the concept behind the project? Yeah, I mean, I I released every single song, like every single version for a different reason. Like the demo is what the demo sounded like. That's the song we wrote, that is ABC. Now there is an OG, like of the first session that we ever did that we'll probably never see the light of day. But the original chorus originally talks, it's like F you and your mom and your sister and your job and your broke down car and the things you call art. Forget you and your father and your cousin and your brother. <laughs> we went for all of the family members, but um, that's what like, that's where ABC started, you know? And so then, then we put on the OG. So the OG was what first was released and then the demo, because I wanted to show what ABC started as and then what it became. And then there's like alternative leaning things about ABC, um, especially just like I feel like the vulgarity and the lyrics and just like the instrumentation can be alternative, but I wanted the OG to still have some poppy elements, more poppier elements to it. So I wanted to come out with an angrier version that really leaned more into the alternative direction and inspiration. And so that's where the angrier version is born. And um, with most acoustic videos I do, like with most songs, I release an acoustic video. And so when I was thinking of ABC, for some reason, I wanted to do this like slow dance waltz <laughs> type of version of ABC. I also really love juxtaposition. And so like, I want to be super like vulgar, vulgar lyrics, but oh. then it's super pretty sounding. Like it's third part harmony and very slow, just very chill. So that's how the chill version was born. And then um, there's this artist where I'm a serpent who her song went viral on TikTok, like she's so awesome. I really loved her music and I love her artist project and the things that she's releasing. And I wanted another like female artist on ABC and I just really love her and I kept just screaming at her at social media, just begging her to jump on the song and then she finally did it, which is so cool that we were able to do that together. And then um, there was a remix that came out that was the Wild remix. And I wanted to have the opportunity for ABC to be possibly like played in a party or club environment or even just at a DJ. Like I just, I, I felt like that could be really cool to just possibly give people the opportunity to play that um, in places that maybe the other versions wouldn't have been able to fit. And then um, I believe the last one, if I'm not leaving all of them out, is the nicer version because that is the one for all the kids to listen to. Some people have renamed it the Kids Pop version and I'm honored because I've always wanted to be in Kids Pop. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I heard uh, your version or uh, cover version ABCD with uh, country music, you know, in TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very, very, very nice. Your your fans everywhere and around the world singing ABCD with their version. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's so yeah. crazy. Okay, your songs are big on social media. What's your perspective about social media life, particularly related to the mental health of adolescents? I, that's a beautiful question. Um, I'm very grateful for social media because it gives me a platform to be able to show my music and I would not be where I am without it and I'm very grateful. It's social media is like kind of like a double edged sword, you know, like you have the positivity that comes from it and it's great and it can be really helpful for your career and just what you're doing and the music that you're making, but then also you have people that are going to see you as a character and not a real human being and say things about you, make up rumors and make up lies and say things that aren't true and assume things about you. And it's, you know, and that can be really difficult and to know how to handle. And, you know, you can, people can really say like very cruel things when they don't know anything about you or they don't do any research about you. They just see one thing online that they read once and they already made an opinion up and about you, you know? Um, and so it's like, it, I love everything. I love the platform, being able to talk to people, being able to connect with people and like show off my music. But then, you know, there can be things that negatively affect your mental health because people can be in a lot of pain and they don't always know 
how to process that and sometimes you know hurt people hurt people and so they want to hurt your feelings and some people will literally just go out of their way to say bad things about you and like not say positive things about you and I think that's a very normal normalized thing on the internet is like for the love you get you will also get hate that comes with it yeah. and um so it's definitely been an interesting thing to try and figure out because also like I started doing social media because I did music you know that was a way to show people the music that I make the way I make music and just my personality and like just who I am as a person trying to like put myself out there but it wasn't an easy and natural thing to do I didn't know how to make TikTok I don't know how that worked that was not a natural I wasn't like okay I'm gonna make my tick like I wasn't like doing TikTok and that's when I started doing music you know and like even Instagram like knowing how to take a picture of yourself that was weird I don't know what pictures I wanted to be posting of me and like I wanted to also figure out how to still feel like me while doing things that didn't feel like me. It didn't feel like me to like try and record myself, but it felt like me showing off an original song and me singing in my bathroom about it, you know, or showing off a demo that I'm excited about. And it felt like me to post about the pizza that I was excited about eating or a photo that I like kind of felt like a baddie in, you know, like, and so it's definitely been a process, but I'm very grateful for it overall. And um, I definitely think the media can be a positive thing for yeah. your mental health if, if you let it, but also it can be really negative. And so it's just to know how much to let it affect you and let it affect the way you view yourself as a person. Okay, thank thank you. And uh, how do social media impact and popularity impact uh, your your popularity impact to your mental health? Is it bad or good? I would say it's overall good. You know, I would not be here where I am without social media and without TikTok, and so i'm very i'm very grateful and but the more positivity you get you're going to get hate and that's a very new thing to be experiencing and to know how to handle and like i don't want to think that people like me it's not like a natural thing for me to be like oh i'm so likable like i don't know and so when people come out and say negative things about me that makes more sense than people liking me you know and so people are saying these things about me that aren't positive I'm like yeah 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 that makes sense rather than somebody being like I love this I'm like but do you, but do you know but do you really you know um but I would say like overall it is a good thing and I'm very grateful for it um but it's just like you know I feel like it's important to talk about the things that can be negative about the internet and how it does actually affect people and how like I can like scream on the top of my lungs that I am a human being I'm a human being and I have feelings, but that's not going to change people's minds to not comment those things, you know. Um, but I still think it's an important thing to talk about. But I'm I'm very grateful for TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Triller and all of the things and Pinterest and and YouTube. All, do, all of the social media. Do you, do you use all of kind social media or just TikTok and yeah. Instagram? I, I use it all, like I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, okay. I'm on Triller, I'm on Pinterest. I'm, I'm actually like literally in the middle of like making okay. it. Um, I'm on Snapchat, oh, I'm on TikTok. Okay. I, well, I'm trying to think, I'm also on YouTube. What else am I on? <laughs> I'm trying to remember Facebook, I'm on Facebook, I'm on SoundCloud, I'm on Spotify, I'm on, okay. I feel like that becomes more like DSPs, like streaming platforms and all that, but um, yeah, I'm like I try my best to be on like all the you things. You still you still read any comments on your post? Oh, for sure. I read I read oh. like all the comments. I'm I try my best to reply to the comments that I see. Um, but I also like I'm not even lying. Wait, let me see. I have uh, <laughs> 355 unanswered. Wow. <laughs> and that's just that's just me. That's just my personality. I'm gonna reply because here's the problem. I'll reply to everybody, then they'll reply back to me. And I'm in the same boat, same problem again. So I try my best to reply to people, but I am just like not the best at texting people. I'm not the best at like replying to comments and DMing people, but I'm trying. I'm trying <laughs> very hard at it. <laughs> okay, thank you. In the next feature, are you consistent with heartbreak songs or do you explore other themes for your next songs? Oh, I for sure explore, even with um emotions really excite me like the depth of emotions and how emotions can lead into each other is a thought that i find very exciting and for me music and color are also really tied together and so exploring with like color and music and emotions like that 
thought is very exciting to me and that's something I've really been experimenting with and the thought of like being in love with somebody and being angry at somebody and being indifferent towards somebody and making mistakes and not always being the good guy and not always making the best decisions for yourself like those are the things that I'm really excited to just explore and talk about okay okay Gil the time is up uh, this is the last one This is okay. a question. Did your ex regret about you? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. He probably thinks I'm uh, an interesting person. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Gail, for your time. Hopefully, you will go to Indonesia someday. Stay yeah. safe. Stay healthy. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.